Hello, today we will be solving this problem called gray code. So what is a gray code? A gray code is a list of all 2 to the n bit strings of length n, where any two consecutive strings differ in exactly one bit. So as we saw in the, in the other problem, there are exactly 2 to the n bit strings of length n, and we need to reorder them such that the difference between any two consecutive strings differ in exactly one bit. And this uh, actual difference between two strings is called their Hamming distance. So we need to reorder the strings such that their Hamming distance is one. So we will be given an n and we need to create a gray code for the given n. For example here, since n is 2, we will have strings from 0 to 3. And all what we need to do is reorder them in such a way that their, the Hamming distance of any two consecutive strings would be equal to 1. So as you can see here, this is a valid arrangement. So let's go ahead and try to find the solution. Actually, I will be presenting two solutions today. So, first of all, let's think of a recursive solution. So, let's say one, we want to solve the problem to solve problem for n is equal to 5, let's see. And, and we have solution for n equals 4. So this is our solution for n equals 4. Here we have 2 to the 4 strings and we want to create a solution for n equals 5. How can we do that? So, what we actually know is that for, for these 2 to the 5 strings that we need to generate, half of them half has 0 as a starting bit as first bit and half as one as first bit and this is true for any n like half of the strings because there are two to the n so two to the four strings will have zero as a first bit and the other half will have one as a first bit and this will actually kind of help us come up with the solution. So, if we go ahead and start with this first half, so we'll have like, we will have 2 to the 4 zeros here. And then 2 to the 4 ones here. And any two consecutive strings in this first block have the same first bit. So we can afford to have a different bit in this second block. And the same thing applies here. We can afford to have a different bit in this block. The only issue here is in this junction here between this first and second block. So let's talk about this first block. So we need two to the four. We need uh, two to the four strings of length four, such that their Hamming distance is one. But we actually know what the answer is. We just we, that was our assumption. We assume that we have a solution for n equals four. So we can just bring our solution and put it here. So if we put our solution here, this will guarantee that this 
these two to the four first strings will be valid because this solution is valid and this first bit is the same but here we have a difference in the first bit so this string the last string of this block should be the same as the first string of this block so if we just take our solution that we came up with and reverse it and put it here so let's call this solution a from 0 to 2 to the 4 so here we can put a from 0 to 2 to the 4 here we can just put a from 2 to the 4 to 0 and we will guarantee that this string the last string of the first block is equal to the first string of the second block so the Hamming distance of this block right here is 0 and since the first bit is different then the Hamming distance of these two strings is 1 and then for the rest since they have the same first bit then there is no difference in the first bit and by construction this solution is valid and has a Hamming distance of 1 and that way we we guarantee that this construction will always lead to a solution if uh, we can go ahead and uh, create uh, some basic cases so the most basic case is for n equals 1 we'll just have 0 1 and then to construct n equals 2 we said since n is equal to 2 we'll have four strings and half of them will start with zero and the other half will start with one and since we have the solution for n equals one we can just put or write it right here and write its reverse here so its reverse would be zero one and as you can see this is valid so one hanging distance of one here hanging distance of one here and hanging distance of one here and for n equals three same thing for n equals 3 uh, we're gonna have 8 strings so half of them so 4 will start with 0 and the other 4 will start with 1 and we just take this put it here so we'll have 0 0 0 0 1 0, 1 1 and 1 0 and here we put its reverse so we start from the bottom so we're gonna have 1 0 one one zero one and then zero zero and by construction this has to work and we could keep constructing solutions like this for any value so this is our recursive solution now uh, let's go ahead and present the iterative solution so there is another iterative solution that works because there is actually a way to convert between gray code and ordinary binary so iterative solution and for the iterative solution we just start with our interval so let's present it here So let's say we want to come up with the solution for n equals uh, 2. So as we said, we need 2 to the 2 strings, so that's 4. So we're going to start counting until we get to 4. So we're going to start with 0, 0, 0, 1, 10, 11. So this is precisely 0, 1, 2, 3. And there is a, an algorithm of sorts to convert between regular and gray code. And this conversion gives us the desired ordering. So what we do is start with this first bit here and put it as is. And then the second bit is just the XOR of these two numbers. 
So the XOR of 0 and 0 is 0. By the way, XOR is a binary operation. So this is a binary operation that works in the following manner. So Uh, the XOR of 0 and 0 is 0, the XOR of 0 and 1 is 1, the XOR of 1 and 0 is 1, and the XOR of 1 and 1 is 0. So as you can see, this binary operation is commutative. So the XOR of AB is equal to XOR of BA, and it has the property that it is equal to 1 when the two bits are different and it is equal to zero otherwise. So we can continue here. We're gonna keep our first bit as is, and then the second bit will be the XOR of zero and one. Since there are difference, this would be equal to one. Here again, we take our first bit as is, and since we are taking the first bit as is, we'll have this first column uh, in the exact same format as we had it with the iterative solution. And we said we take this first bit as is, then we're gonna XOR 1 and 0, so that's 1. Here again, we're gonna start with 1. 1 XOR 1 is 0. So we end up with this solution, which is exactly the solution we found when we used the other approach. So these are the two approaches to the problem. Let's go ahead and present the code of the solution. Okay, so now we'll present the code for the recursive approach to this problem. So we'll start by reading our input and then we'll start implementing our recursive function that we will call get. We will declare our return uh, vector of strings as actual, uh, meaning the actual uh, 2 to the n strings that represent the answer. And then we will start with our base case and that is when n equals 1. So this is our base case. So if n equals 1, we'll just push 0 and 1 into actual and return it. Else, if n is not equal to 1, then we need to get the previous value. So we'll declare a vector of string, call it previous, and that would be equal to get of n minus 1. And then we'll start by constructing our actual solution. And we do that in two steps. The first step is by going through the this vector previous that we get. And for each string in previous, we'll prepend 0 to it, as we explained. Then after prepending 0 to that string, we just push it into our actual vector. Then in the second step, we'll... Uh, do uh, something similar so we'll go through all the strings in previous but now starting from the last element so that the adjacent elements are the same and the different bit is that first one we prepend so we'll go from the last element to the first one and for each string in previous we'll just prepend one to it and at the end, we'll just return our actual vector. And in our main function, we'll declare a vector of string and call it answer. So it receives the return value of get. And then we'll set answer equal to get of n. And at the end, we'll just go through all the strings in answer and print them. So this is pretty much it. Let's try our solution. So for two... We, that looks correct, so we just submit it. It worked. Now uh, we'll move on to the iterative solution. So if you want to see that, stick around, please. Okay. So now we'll present the iterative solution. Again, we'll go ahead and read the input. Then we'll uh, go through all the numbers from 0 to 
2 to the n minus 1. So for int number from 0 to 2 to the n, this is actually equal to 2 the, to the n because 1 shifted by n is like adding n zeros to 1 in base 2 and this is precisely 2 to the n. So for each number, we'll have, as we said, we'll have to write down the first bit as is. So we'll implement a function that uh, gives us mm, the value of the bit at any given position in that number. So this is a boolean function that returns the bit at position pos of the number number. So here inside our for loop, we'll uh, print the bit value of the first bit of our number and that would be value of number at position n minus 1 and then we'll go to all the positions starting from n minus 2 and we'll print the XOR of that position with the previous one so that's what our for loop does so it goes to all position from n minus 2 to 0 and then it prints the XOR value this is actually the symbol of XOR in C++ and C it is actually the exponential symbol so this gives us the XOR value of the value of number at position power and the value of number at position power plus one and after that we'll just print a new line to move on to the next string and this is pretty much it for the iterative solution so let's go ahead and try So for 2, it gives the same result. So let's submit this solution as well. So that works too. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Thank you.